Good morning. Glad everybody could join us as we gather here today to worship. As we do, um, I want to begin with a few announcements that we have. Um, One, just a a reminder of October the 15th. I want to lift that date up again and put that in front of you for the flu shot clinic that will be held in the um, small fellowship hall with friends from um, Livsum School of Pharmacy who will be here to provide that service. Um, bring your insurance card, and that will be covered. If you're uninsured, you can. Um, it's a t- cost of $25, so we look forward to having offering that. And also on the 15th will be the uh, church picnic. Um, information about that was in the newsletter, should have been in the newsletter. So um, hang on to that, and you may hear more about that. Another need that I was made aware of this week that I wanted to lift up to you, um, if you've gone to the grocery store, you have noticed some, some sticker shock. Um, on, on prices, and because of that, the food bank is currently hurting um, and is in need of quite a bit of things. Um, that has been in the newsletter, um, so if you are out and able to um, get a few things and bring those, um, gift cards even to bring, and they can do some of the shopping if you're not able to do that, um, Robin would be very appreciative, and I know that our neighbors who um, use that, and she has just spoken to the um, great number of uh, increase that the food bank is seeing on Tuesday evenings um, due to rising cost and problems that we're seeing. So um, do want to put that in front of you. Um, if you have any questions, you can let me know. Um, and with that, as we come today, we come and bring ourselves into this space ready to worship, ready to feel God's spirit moving, ready to be uplifted and filled with joy to go forth into this week that we have, that we may reflect God's love. So I invite you to center yourself here today, to open your hearts and open your minds as we prepare to worship.
Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Children of God, when we face strife, upset, and harm in our midst, we so often turn to ask God, how many times should I forgive? When Jesus answers that we should forgive again and again and again, we are tempted to repeat the question, how many times should I forgive? Until God turns the question around, how many times have I forgiven you? How many times have I loved you? How many times has my grace been sufficient for you? Let us learn then how to forgive, not out of our own power, but out of God's, whose forgiveness us that we might be free to learn to live with one another well. Amen. I invite you to stand to sing hymn number 121 in your Methodist hymnal. There's a wideness in God's mercy. All four stanzas. Please join me in prayer. Loving God, we confess that we struggle to forgive and we struggle to create space for forgiveness to happen. We rush ourselves to excuse the harmful speech and actions of others as a way of suppressing instead of honestly naming the hurt we have experienced. We expect others to pardon our faults without also attending to our own need to repent. We demand forgiveness from others instead of recognizing forgiveness as a gift we give to one another and that we receive from you. We will forgiveness as a weapon instead of a bridge that brings us back together. Forgive us, we pray and free us to joyfully extend mercy and grace to one another, to set and respect boundaries with one another, and to receive from you to love and wisdom we need to grow as the community of Christ. Amen. You may, you may st remain standing for our, go our gospel reading as we join together in our prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as your scripture is read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. I enjoy, invite you to hear these words. They are found in Matthew's Gospel. In the 18th chapter, we'll begin reading in verse 21. And then Peter came and said to him, Lord... If another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? 
And Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. And when he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, Have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him 100 denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. And then this fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience on me and I will pay you. But he refused. And then he went and threw him into prison until he could pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. And then his Lord summoned him and said, You wicked slave, I forgave all that debt that you, because you had pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, the Lord handed him over to be tortured until he could pay his entire debt. So, my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I'll invite our kids to come forward with our children's moments with... Good morning again to most of you, you to all of you. I saw you in Sunday school this morning. So we have a theme today that we are looking at in church, and we've already used the word a bunch of times already. That word is forgiveness. Can you say that? Forgiveness. Does anybody know what that means? Echo? Okay, be nice and respectful. Anybody else add to that? Well, I thought maybe a good way to talk about forgiveness so that maybe we could understand it a little bit better would be to uh, tell a story about an experience that I had. And Ben said it'd be okay if I shared the story. Well, it's kind of, but... It was two or three years ago, I think. I was fairly new to the church, and Ben and I uh, were best buds. I remember you told me that. You're my best friend when I came, and that made me feel so welcome and so good. And whenever we would come on Wednesdays before choir and before Bible study, uh, Ben and I would often sit close to each other and have our meal together, and uh, occasionally we'd start cutting up a little bit and having some fun, and in fact, we did that quite a bit, (laughs) and I remember one time that we were kind of scaring each other, kind of making sudden moves or giving, you know, saying something like boo or something like that, and I remember I thought, okay, I snuck up behind Ben, and I scared him, and I scared him so bad that he fell off of his chair and hit his head on the floor. 
And I was so sorry for that. Ben was crying because I know it hurt. It hurt pretty bad. And all I could think of to say was, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. And tried to comfort him some. Well, I wondered if Ben would forgive me. There's that word. I wondered if Ben would be okay with me saying, I'm sorry. And by the next week when we got together, we were best friends still. And that's because I think Ben forgave me. You see, forgiveness is kind of hard because it kind of starts with this idea that I have to respect all of God's creatures. And if I have done something that has harmed one of them, I need to say, I'm sorry. Do you ever have to say you're sorry after you hurt somebody? Maybe you hit them? Or my brother called me a turkey one time. <laughs> and it hurt my feelings. Normally, I just laugh at that. But it hurt my feelings. And I had to ask my brother if he, if he would say sorry for that. I, that was another battle. But the reality is, is if we do something that hurts one another, we need to say, I'm sorry. Because that's what God would want us to do. God wants us to stay in relationship with one another that is like best friends. God wants us to fess up and say, I'm sorry, when we've done something that we shouldn't do. But there's another side to that. And that is, is if somebody has done something to us and say, I'm sorry, then we need to offer forgiveness. We need to say, I understand, I forgive you. And then we can move on like God wants us to. I brought something else as kind of a little show and tell thing. You may think it's an apple. It's not. Can you hold that? there's something about that that seems strange? What? It has a hole in it that's different from an apple. Ben, tell me what you think. It's light? I think you're saying the opposite. <laughs> it's kind of heavy, isn't it? Let's let Ava see. Notice how it goes down before you can pick it back up? It's metal, yeah. Hand it to Bexley and see if she can handle it. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. Hand it to Allie. Okay. It's pretty hard. Okay, can you pass it back this way? The reason I brought that is, is that it is really pretty heavy, I think. I thought it was heavy when I picked it up. And what if you had to carry this everywhere you went today, all day? And like when you were eating, you had to be holding this. Or whenever you're playing, you had to be holding on to it. And about when you had a snack, still had to hold on to it. And about when you go to bed tonight, had to be holding on to it. That'd be a little much, wouldn't it? Wouldn't you get tired of always holding this? Okay. Well, one of the things about forgiveness is, is if we choose not to forgive someone, it's like we're still hanging on to what they did to us or what they said about us. And it gets real heavy. And over time, we get really tired of holding on to it. But the good news is we can put it away when we forgive and when we're forgiven. And that's a gift to us from God. Let's pray. Oh, God, we thank you for the gift of forgiveness. It's a gift that you give us that we are forgiven when we say we're sorry to you. 
And Lord, it is a gift that we can share with others when we forgive them if there is something they have done. Lord, help us to be masters of forgiveness that we might grow in love for you and for one another. In Jesus' name, amen. You may remain seated as we sing hymn number 549, verse stanzas 1 and 3. Where... There are days that I just love reading stories about Peter. I love reading Peter's humanness because there are days that I can so connect with where Peter was. Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how many times should I forgive? And another thing I love about Peter is Peter's gumption because Peter didn't wait for Jesus to give him the answer. He went ahead and said, I'm going to answer it, but he was not quite so sure about himself, so he answered it with the question and said, as many as seven times? Peter's question brings up a couple of thoughts that we need to talk about today. And first I want to say, and I want you to hear me as we talk about this throughout today, and that is that Peter asking here is not necessarily a general, wide-sweeping rule on forgiveness. Forgiveness which includes just anybody and everybody. Peter asks it in a very specific way. Lord, if another member of the church sins against me. And so hopefully we can flesh that out just a little bit. But possibly, this question was raised because something has happened, a problem has occurred within the faith community. You know, laws and rules and questions, they don't usually get, uh, get brought up or created until after there has been a break in social behavior, rarely before, because we, as a general rule, are a people who are reactive rather than proactive. We react to situations instead of proactively try to to figure things out. So we can probably surmise that something has happened, the details of which we are not necessarily made aware of and reported to. Possibly someone has sinned and needs forgiveness. And so the question then comes to Peter as to how many times should I forgive this individual? How much forgiveness is necessary and how often should it be extended? Therefore, one of the things that I think is good for us to ponder today becomes that if this is less, than an, less of an issue about just a general wide-sweeping forgiveness and more focused within the context of the community of faith and our faith lived out. Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? Within the context of Peter's question, he has framed it within the life of the church and necessary practices that must be implemented on our part that we may be about the business of building up the kingdom rather than tearing down the kingdom. 
I don't know if you've looked around in our world and seen, but there seems to be a whole lot of tearing down that goes on in our world these days, even within the midst of our own denomination. As disaffiliations continue, as folks continue to spread mistruths or half-truths or flat-out lies about what we hold as belief and true as United Methodist, there seems to be a pervasiveness in the community of faith in which it at times is being picked apart piece by piece. Today's gospel reading, it comes right after where last week's lectionary gospel had left off, and we looked at the Old Testament passage, not the gospel, so I want to go back and I want to read you last week's gospel, um, just to kind of help set this within a little bit of framework of, of what's going on. This, these verses are Matthew 18, 15, and 20, and in it, Jesus says these things. If your brother or sister sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If you are listened to, you have then regained one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. That if that person refuses to listen to them, tell it to the whole church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let one, one such be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I have told you, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And again, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything, you ask, it will be done by my Father in heaven. So what Jesus is saying here is, you know, we have a lot of relationships in life. And Jesus is trying to tell us that our relationships need to be squared away. Our relationships with one another, they need to be fixed and right and good and healthy. And we all know that at times something may come along and in the journey of that relationship, things at times get out of sorts. Things go a little bit sideways. Things get twisted just a little bit and we sometimes have some disagreements between us. We don't always see eye to eye on everything that is before us, and that's okay. I'm not saying that we have to. But Jesus gives us some, some rules for when things like that happen. But you know, sometimes we're good at the disagreements. Even within our own lives, within personal relationships, friendships, marriages, within our family, within work, even within the church, disagreements come about. Disagreements on how things might need to be funded or what should take precedence in being funded or that which is more important. Disagreements about what someone said or how someone said something. Snide comments made in a board meeting. And let me say that never happens here though, right? <laughs> or maybe snide comments made in the meeting after the meeting, or as I like to call them, parking lot meetings. Or the meetings that take place on the cell phone on the car ride home. Again, I know no one here has ever done that. Or maybe what I'm talking about is something a little bit more serious when things really go sideways. And relationships are broken, when trust is destroyed, or when power is abused. And in this passage, Jesus is speaking to what it means to try to right those relationships. To try to bring everything back into line how it needs to be. And then we come to the very next verse, and Peter says, well, Lord... How many times should I forgive someone, a member of the church, who sins against me? Peter is looking for an answer. Peter is looking for a definition then of what forgiveness looks like. Now, 
I hope you hear this today. If you don't hear anything else that I have to say today, hear this. Take this one with you. This is what we pay attention to because within the context of where Peter is, within the context of what Peter is asking here about how many times should we forgive someone, what Jesus says is that there can be no limit on our forgiveness. Forgiveness is a never-ending practice that is essential within the life of the church within our life of faith as we seek to live it out day in and day out. Now, I am aware that when we live in a world or that we take place and find ourselves in a place where there are such deep, deep deep-seated divisions in the life of the church, divisions that only seek to get deeper Now, now, right now, is the time that we need to hear these words from Jesus. And even more than hearing these words, friends, now is the time that we as the church need to live them out. But forgiveness is not something that always comes naturally to us. Forgiveness, it is hard. It is hard work, especially when the, deep, the wounds are so deep. It's work that we, we, we trudge through to get to where we are going because forgiveness, as spoken here by Jesus, it is set within the parameters of community. It's outlined in those verses that come immediately preceding our text today, and it can And it is challenging, and if we listen to Jesus, it is potentially public process. And in that process, the pain, or the offense, or the sin, it's not minimized. But in this process, we see that it provides support for the person, and it empowers the one who has been sinned against. Only here, within this context, does Jesus call us to forgive others countless times. Now, I want to follow that up and I want to say that it's important that we stress this point today because the church at times has shared some very dangerous thoughts and some hurtful theology about what it means to forgive. And we have sometimes thrown this forgiveness word around so much that we've made it just this blanket statement. And I want you to think about just how dangerous that it could be to tell someone, say, in an abusive relationship that they should just continue to forgive their abuser and send them back into that relationship. That's not what Jesus is talking about here. That's not what Jesus is getting at. So Forgiveness is this process, it's this work that we must be about. That must be our business that we as the church are setting forth. Because sometimes those dangerous thoughts, they just don't work. And certainly forgiveness towards others is important, so don't hear me say that forgiveness isn't important. So what we find is we're, we're balancing on a, on a tightrope right here. And it's very easy that we can, can get off into the mud of, of the situation. But as Jesus is speaking, there's so much more to our understanding of what forgiveness is than what we often attribute it to. I said a while ago that I, I appreciate Peter. I appreciate his willingness to ask what Apparently, if you read this story that Jesus follows it up with, might be kind of a silly question. Because Jesus kind of responds with this almost absurd parable back to Peter. And it's almost like he's saying, Peter, you've asked such a silly question, I'm going to explain it in a silly way. And we listen to it and we hear the absurdity there from the very beginning. We see that this king is about the business of settling some accounts and there's a slave who owes him 10,000 talents. Now, we might not mean a whole lot to us, but one talent would be equivalent to many years of labor. 
And so to say that, that one slave owed 10,000 talents would be like saying today 100 billion trillion, you know. This, this unknowable, uncountable, unreachable amount. This over-exaggerated not to mention this king who just comes about and, and, and freely is forgiving this enormous debt. And it continues there. And the guy is forgiven and he goes about and he encounters another guy that he knows. And he owes him some money. He owes him some lunch money from the other day. And he says, hey, please have forgiveness on me and, and I'm going to work with you. And we're going we're to get through this together just as he had done with the king. And he says no and he goes and throws him in prison until the debt was repaid. Well, that didn't sit right with the other folks in the story, and so they went back and they told the king what had happened, and the king came to the, to the slave, and he takes the man and he tortures him until he repays the debt. The whole story, it reeks of hyperbole. It reeks of this gross over-exaggeration done so to make a point. And he ends there with hyperbole, hopefully hyperbole, so my heavenly Father will do to you, every one, if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. And I say, hopefully, that is hyperbole, because I know some brothers and sisters who have departed this life for the life that comes next, and with their dying breath, they have clung to those pains, hurts, and not offered forgiveness in this life that they had carried for years. So for me, this story becomes Jesus' way of stressing the importance of what it means to forgive and awakens us as the body of Christ that we may be about the business of forgiveness. I've already said forgiveness is hard, y'all. It's hard. It's hard. And when Peter asked Jesus, how many times should I forgive? And he tries to answer it. He says, as many as seven times? Now we might wonder why Peter would fixate on that number seven. Well, in Jesus and Peter's world, that number was considered sacred. It was considered holy and thus it was seen as a perfect number. So to forgive seven times, at least in Peter's mind and those listening, would have been this idea of perfect forgiveness. And Jesus' response probably would have shocked a few folks. Because apparently seven wasn't as perfect as Peter thought that it might have been. Perfect forgiveness for Jesus was boundless. Like God's forgiveness towards us, God forgives an, un, an, an endless number of times as we trip and stumble our ways through our lives. And God gives us chance after chance after chance to have innumerable opportunities that we might try and do it again. You see, perfect forgiveness in the eyes of God, perfect forgiveness by God's rules, perfect forgiveness through God's grace has no assigned number. And that, in and of itself, makes it even harder. And having received forgiveness from God, we are then in turn expected to go forth into the lives that we live and offer forgiveness in the same way. We are very, all very human. And we all make mistakes and we all need that occasional do-over when we, we, we goof things, when we, we make some missteps. My Angelou once said, while I know myself as a creation of God, I am also obligated to realize and remember that everyone else and everything else are also God's creation. That first truth of knowing ourselves as part of God's creation secures our own place and our own, our own status as to who we are. And we're pretty good with that. We remind ourselves of that a lot, but the second there, that everyone else and everything else are also part of God's creation, well, that challenges us a bit, doesn't it? That one's a little bit harder for us. 
because sometimes it's harder for us to open up our eyes and widen our view. But what God has put before us was this call to not exclude those who view life differently than we might. And thus we have an opportunity, friends. It's an opportunity that we might live into perfect forgiveness and that we might make it our own. But it's hard work. And when we live in a world where more and more and more attacks on this community of faith that I love so dearly happen, I will be the first to admit that there are days where forgiveness for things like that are the farthest thing from my mind. I struggle in those moments when others seek to tear down God's beloved. And it's in those moments that I stand with Peter. Not understanding, not knowing what I should do. And I might even ask a silly question like Peter. But what we find is that we are often met with Jesus' not so gentle push to help us see our call to forgive as God has forgiven us. And for that, that's what it's all about. Oh, I'll say it again, forgiveness is hard. It's hard work, but it's holy work. And it's what God has set before us. So may we be ready and may we be willing to forgive as we set forth to put in the hard work of forgiving. Because if we do care, I'll say this as we close today, because if we do care about seeing a change in our world and, and, and making that real, might it start with us? Might it start with me? as each and every one of us strive to become more and more like Jesus. For we offer these things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to sing hymn number 2169, God, How Can We Forgive? As we come to the prayers of the people today, we come and we lift up the many needs that are among us and before us. We lift up those that are on our prayer concerns and, our, and our, um, that have been made known. And we also lift up today and remember the family of Wayne Plump. Um, and I just want to lift up arrangements for that um, tonight, um, visitation, and tomorrow the service here at the church at 1. Um, so continue to keep the Plump family in your prayers this day. As we come, we enter into this time of prayer. 
as we bow in God's holy presence. Loving and merciful God, we come before you this day, fresh from a week in which we have been challenged. Some of the challenges have caused us to worry and strife. Other challenges have brought us clear direction for our lives. And in all of this, you are there bringing healing and peace for us. Lord, today as we gather here in this space, we offer before you the names of those who are ill, who mourn, who feel lost and alienated, wondering if there is anyone who cares. We come and we lift up those we love, And we name them in our hearts before you. And Lord, we pray that you may hear our prayers. And that you may bring your healing mercy for all those this day. For we also bring to you, loving God, names and situations of joy and celebration. For you have been at work in our midst during these times as well as during the difficult ones. So God, we share of our praise this day of the ways in which we have seen your hand at work and felt your spirit guiding us, loving us, and leading us along the way. So may you bring your healing presence to all these as we prepare to take this word that we have heard and take its roots into our hearts that we can go into this world around us to share the hope and love that comes from you alone. And together today, God, we come and join our voices in the prayer that your Son, our Lord and Savior, taught to his disciples as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we come now to the time of our service where we give back a portion of what God has given unto us, we come in gratitude for all the abundant blessings that have been showered upon us. And I invite our ushers to come forward as we celebrate and receive our morning's offerings.
Let us pray. Generous God, you have given so much to us in love and joy. Every good thing in our life reflects your caring. Even in the giving of our offerings, we have tried to give our best, but know we could do more. In a world where forgiveness has become a rare commodity, it is often an asset we hold back to maintain, to maintain power over another. Help us to hear the teaching of Jesus and the generosity of forgiveness. May we learn to give that others with wild extravagance. We pray in Jesus Christ's name, who gave all. Amen. You may be seated for just a moment before I offer a benediction. Um, we have a joy today, and I'm going to invite Mary and Jody Combs and Philip Dean to come join me as they are going to move their membership um, here to Bellevue. So I'm going to invite you to grab your hymnal and join with me on page 38 as we ask them a couple of questions. Friends, I ask you today, as members of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? And if you will respond with, I will. Amen. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Amen. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power and increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you and the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The grace of God who called us into eternal glory in Christ, may he establish you and strengthen you by the power of your Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace.
Amen. Friends, I invite you to, to join me in welcoming um, these three, Jody, Phil, and Mary. After the service today, find them, shake their hand, welcome them, and make your love known. All right. Now you can stand for the benediction. Friends, let's go. Let's go and let's forgive. And may God's forgiveness become part of who we are. May we give from our hearts. And may we offer and extend the love that God has made known to us, to all those we meet. Go in his name this day. Amen.